Lotus is reinventing itself. The new Amira will be its last ever pure combustion engine sports car, and the Avaya will have nearly 2,000 brake horsepower. It'll be electric and the heaviest Lotus ever built. That is until this comes along. That's right, Lotus is making an electric SUV to give it the strongest footing possible in the electric age, and it's called the Electra. But let's rewind for a second, because to rejuvenate the company 26 years ago, Lotus built something very different. So back in the early 90s, Lotus was struggling. The Elan M100 was being thoroughly outsold by the MX-5. And well, Lotus needed a kickstart, and it got one with this, the Lotus Elise. And the Elise was an instant icon. It was lightweight, it was revolutionary with this aluminium structure. And well, we know the story. They only stopped making it last year. Such was the success of this small little sports car. And if this new SUV is gonna have an impact and stand out amongst so many other electric SUVs out there, well, it needs to do something different. It needs to be a Lotus. And even though it's a huge electric SUV, that's exactly what Lotus is aiming for with the Electra. But if you're a fan of Lotus and the pure sports cars of yesteryear that they've produced, well, it might make you a little bit uncomfortable that they're making such a huge electric SUV like this. It's not really a typical Lotus, is it? But we have to give it a chance because cars like this are what fund the sports cars that we know and love from the brand. And immediately, well, it does look pretty interesting, doesn't it? So at the front, it's not really like any traditional Lotus. It doesn't really look like the Avaya or the Amira, but it does have what Lotus calls a porous design language. Now, older Lotuses like the older Lan and the Elise, they were porous as well, but for different reasons. Now this car, it's got all sorts of holes and scoops in it to guide the airflow around it and make it more efficient through the air which is pretty clever stuff, but you've also got 23 inch wheels, which aren't very Lotus, are they? From launch, there'll be three models to choose from, and the entry level Electra produces 592 brake horsepower, and there's nothing entry level about that. 0 to 62 miles an hour comes up in less than three seconds, which means that aside from the Avaya, the Electra will be the fastest accelerating Lotus ever. Subscribe to Auto Express to see exactly what that feels like when we drive it. So it definitely has the speed to do justice to that badge. But this is more than just a Lotus, isn't it? This is an electric luxury car. So how far can it go on a charge? Well, Lotus is quoting around 350 miles, which is pretty decent, about 30 miles less than the equivalent BMW iX. But yeah, you're not really going to be going much further than that in a single day, are you? And when it's time to top up, well, you can plug in at speeds of up to 350 kilowatts, thanks to the 800 volt architecture underneath. But hold on, because Lotus has now said that it's targeting up to 373 miles of range, which pretty much matches the BMW. So things are looking pretty good so far. The Electra brings a few neat tricks to the table and the numbers are bang on the money. But here's the big question. Will it drive like a Lotus? Well, Colin Chapman once said that there's nothing lighter than a hole. And this car, well, it's covered in them. And the body panels themselves, well, they're aluminium. And you've even got these carbon fiber sections down here. And the net result is a curb weight of around two tons. Now, that doesn't sound very Lotus-like, but compared to something like the BMW iX, it's really impressive. The iX is 2.6 tons. And inside, you've even got lightweight fabric that's half the weight of normal leather. Okay, it might seem like sacrilege for a Lotus to be so heavy, but to give the engineers credit, it's still impressively light for a car like this. And if Lotus desperately needs to build an SUV, then that's all you can really ask for. And there's also some electronic wizardry to help mask all that bulk. So we've got electronic roll control, and we've got rear wheel steering, which helps boost agility in slower corners. And there's even a torque vectoring rear differential. So it might even be able to do skids. Lotus's chassis engineers are some of the best on the planet, so if anyone can make it work, it's them. What Lotus isn't so famous for is sumptuous high-tech interiors, so let's see what they've done with the Electra. So if the Electra has a party piece, well, it has to be this cabin. It is spectacular in here, there's so much to take in. The architecture, the design, all these sorts of materials, it's just 
yeah, a proper feast for the eyes in here. And starting off with this steering wheel, I mean, I'm not sure why, but it seems to be a trend to go for a hexagonal steering wheel with big electric SUVs these days. And it's still nice to hold. I prefer a round wheel, but the switches on here, the dual like they are really really attractive and you've got these paddles behind the wheel to control the drive modes and the regen and then you've even got a 1500 watt kef stereo and in terms of multimedia well you've got this 15.1 inch oled display now in this pre-production car it doesn't actually work but you can see it pretty much dominates the center of the dash here and elsewhere well the electra doesn't actually have a traditional gauge cluster instead it has these two thin strips ahead of the driver and the passenger actually, which display things like your charge level, your range, the media you're playing, and things like that. So the cabin is, well, space age, and it feels great too. This is no parts bin special, and pretty much everything you touch feels modern and expensive, even with this pre-production car. And it's pretty much the same story in the back of the Electra. It feels hyper luxurious back here. You're sat in these seats, nice and reclined, which are sort of, the same design as the front seats, but just a bit smaller, still fully electrically adjustable. You can move them backwards, forwards, recline them as well. And the overall design, the fit and finish is identical to the front. But this car is actually a four seat model. A five seat model will be standard in the UK. And yeah, to be honest, I always think that a car this size should be able to carry five people. But nevertheless, you've got this nice center console here with the screen in the center that mirrors the front screen. And you've also got a nice little wireless charging pad there as well. We don't normally associate Lotus with bleeding edge tech, but the Electra really does change that. The thing is covered in sensors that enable level four autonomous driving, and owners can even summon the car from a parking space using their phones. The Elise could only dream of tech like this. Unfortunately, like the Elise, boot space really isn't the Electra's strong suit. It's not tiny, but at 400 liters, it's 100 liters smaller than the iX. There is at least a 77 litre boot in the front, but it's not exactly cavernous. The Electra will go on sale next year for less than 100 grand, which is less than we thought actually considering what's on offer here. But how do you feel about a Lotus SUV? Let us know in the comments below and thanks for watching.